Yes, good morning everyone. These morning sessions are always tough to get people going, but uh, hopefully, hopefully I will give you some food for thought and I'm sure there's a lot of experience in the room uh, having to get questions and, and also challenges. I'm representing an over 90 year old airline, uh, a legacy airline which is in the middle of transformation. Uh, we are of course building the platform for Green Air between the shortcut between Europe and Asia. And now with the new fleet of Airbus 350, which will get us in October, that will really be an enabler for our transformation also when it comes to customer experience. Well, let's jump straight away. So Finnair, it's been over close to 10 million passengers planning to reach over that limit this year. Really the core strategy of Finnair is to be the air bridge between Europe and North and Asia, especially Northeast and Asia, having us the shortest connection uh, among the Cities, and that's really the core of our strategy. But that's not enough going forward. We also have to enable customers to give them more added value. The big transformation that many airlines are facing today is that the revenue or the ticket revenue is going down. The competition is getting tougher, new competition, more capacity coming all the time. So we have to build new ancillary, new revenue sources. And that's where the ancillary revenue comes in. Uh, and like I was saying earlier in the morning in the, in the first panel is that we have the unique chance of having the customer on board eight to 10 hours. There's not many other industries that you actually get the customer on your aircraft or in your shop for such a long period. But the legacy airlines have not really used that time efficiently and that's what needs to change going forward. The other, other challenge if you compare the ticket sales and ancillary sales is the fact that customers are extremely cautious, very... They think about, they compare different airlines when they choose the airline ticket. They look, they want to save every single euro or dollar or what they have. But when they are on board, when they have actually bought the ticket, then the customer generally changes the mindset. They are much more open to spend more money. Traditionally, the legacy airlines have, have only focused on the ticket sales, and then after the, uh, after the passenger has bought the ticket, then they just focus on, on the service element. But what has to change, and has is partially changing now, that we need to offer them more added value throughout the whole journey. And that's where the ancillary revenue comes in, and of course we've got higher margins than the ticket sales. So what the, what the legacy airlines have not been good at, but what has to change, is to offer new services, new customer experiences throughout the whole journey. And that's what Finnair is definitely committed to do in the future. The big problem that legacy airlines have is the distribution part. We have all these elements on an airline, but we can't distribute it. Passengers don't have that information when they, when they purchase their ticket. When you go to an on-time travel agent, it's not visible that Finnair is, a, is one of the most, it's the Europe's most punctual airline, it's a four-star airline having the shortest route. When you go to an OTA today, that information is not going through to the customer. And that has to change, and that's of course NDC is one, one way of doing it. And if, if we need to improve the distribution, especially for a six, uh, six freedom carrier like Finnair is operating in multiple markets with a relatively unknown brand. How do you make sure that we can distribute relevant data to the customer to make the right choice? And that's where the new future of distribution comes to the picture. What we should do, what we should do is the same as the, as the hotel industry has already managed to do. We, we need to give them more rich content when they do their purchase. That's where we're not today in the, in the airline industry. Uh, I think we should definitely look at the hotel distribution as an example how well you can compare and you can base your decision based on different elements. Today, you still are unable to do that in, a, in an airline distribution. Another change uh, which is happening all over the world is of course the development of the mobile, mobile platforms and mobile distribution. This is a short example of what's happening in the US in four years. How the mobile, purchasing through mobile has exploded. And that's, an, the, again, a new distribution platform where the airlines have to bring the relevant data. It's not enough that you just modify your web page to suit mobile distribution. You need to bring mobile platforms in order to keep relevant data to customers so that they make the right choice and give additional services. 
still traditionally, when people consider travel, they make decisions at home. So the majority of purchasing and planning of travel is happening at home. But now the mobile is, is changing that as well. When you have your mobile phone everywhere you are, when you're sitting on a metro or, or in a bus, you have time to think about travel and then you surf. So we have to be able to give them relevant data at each point. Um, and that's where the airlines need to be relevant in each, each step of the way. It's not only about buying the airline ticket, it's about the service experience for the whole journey, including the destination. Another, another important thing is that after they started travel, they're still looking for what to do at the destination. And now I come back to the eight hours on board. We have the customer eight hours on board. They are on their way to their destination. What do airlines offer to the passenger during that eight hours? Maybe they push the in-flight, uh, the duty-free trolley through the, through the corridors. During that eight hours, we could give them advice on the destination where they're going. We could sell them destination packages, sightseeing tours, tickets to a concert. All these things could be done during the trip, but the airlines are not doing it. And that's what the new technology enables us the onboard connectivity. We can offer them relevant data. We can't push it to them. It should be up to the customer to decide if you want to explore the destination while you're on board. We need to be more, much more proactive in that, and that's what we at Finnair plan to do with our new fleet with the Airbus Trickey. China is the most important market for Finnair going forward. We currently operate to five destinations, including Chongqing and Xi'an in western and central China. The new Chinese uh, affluent middle class is exploding in, in size. These are the millennials who explore travel in a different way. Traditionally in China, when you went to Europe, you went on a package tour, on a group tour. And most likely the millennials started their first European trip on the same way. But now when they're gaining independence, they're fully mobile. They want to make their own decisions. They want to have a custom. They want to have an experience. It's something different what their parents didn't explore before. And the airlines again have to give the relevant data to them. They have to give reasons to travel, reasons, and new destinations which their parents haven't been. And it's all mobile. It's all about the social media. As soon as they come on board, they want to post pictures. Uh, and again, it's slightly different than in Europe. Chinese new consumers are much more on social media than Europeans are. So how can we offer them relevant data which is suited for the Chinese consumer? And that's what the airlines need to be better at. We have to adjust to each market because they're not all the same. And it's all about really offering unique experiences and that's what the Chinese new millennials are needing and requiring. And the brand importance is growing as well. We see that the, uh, the millennials, it does matter which airline they fly on. It's not the number one priority, but it does impact their choice. They also want to have an experience of board. They want to have Chinese relevant data, Chinese offer, offer on board. Uh, and with the new technology, with, with the connectivity that we can offer on board, we can give them relevant, relevant services, applicable and suitable for the Chinese market, or any other market. And that's what Legacy Airlines traditionally has not been that good at, but, what we, but the new technology enables that transformation. Again, when we look at, so, through which media you offer different data, and you see again, it's all about online, it's all about mobile. That's really the future. Think about, the, also the media changes during the trip. You might book through an online travel agent, but when you're on travel, then you look for different review sites, you have different different priorities for different channels. And again, we have to be in all of those channels in order to be on top of the mind of this year. Traditionally, airlines have not focused on the onboard experience. That has to change, because when we look at this next part, where does the consumer choices happen? They would like to do with more choices on board, but the airlines have been unable to offer that in the past. So the, so the net impact has to be that really the airlines has to be in each step of the way. So that we can improve our ancillary revenue sources, we can keep more relevant customer experience, and hopefully at the end, the customer then chooses us over another airline. 
and of course, there is no fact hiding that, the, of course, the margins of an ancillary elements are much higher than actually on a ticket price. You can easily earn up to 50% margin on some of the products. And unfortunately, the margins of a ticket, airline ticket is, is, not, is not even close. So really, to have the total profitability of a customer, we need to have both elements uh, on board. So it's, it's really about being with the, with the passengers, with the people, in every step of the way, and that's what Finnair new customer experience going forward with the Airbus 350 is all about. So it is a life cycle that goes throughout the journey, and really that we need to keep the most relevant data after the trip, so that they will hopefully choose Finnair on their next, next European, European trip going forward. Then the IT part, that's the tough part. Uh, many legacy airlines have the fact that we have a lot of old IT systems. They're not compatible with the other systems. We need to build multiple layers in between so that we can offer an omni-channel experience. And this is a challenge. This is a challenge for Finnair. This is a challenge for, I'm sure, of all legacy airlines. That how do we actually connect all these IT systems that we have so that the customer can experience the uh, same service regardless of the channel? And uh, I would be lying if I say that Finnair has this all in place. No, we're in, in, in the build-up phase. We need to find layers in between so that we can really offer the only channel experience. And this is the biggest, probably the biggest challenge for the airlines, legacy airlines, to how can we build the platforms uh, for the airlines to survive and, and bring the relevant service to each customer. And also, depending on the, on the travel purpose, uh, even though we could talk about the same individual, when the passenger is on a business trip, the requirements are different than when they are on a leisure trip. But we should always know them, regardless of the purpose of the trip. And that's really the key. That we need to know the customer, but we also need to know the, the reason for travel. Is it on business or leisure? Because your requirements, your needs are different. With the new Airbus, 350, that Finnair will be the first European airline to have the new aircraft coming up as of October. We are developing our own in-flight entertainment through Wi-Fi and through our IFP system, which enables we tell the passenger each step of the way what's happening next on the flight. We will bring new elements on the destination that we sell destination elements to services to the customer. Also, we should know them enough that we can offer them relevant in-flight service elements. If passenger likes gin and tonic, we should proactively offer that. Or we know that they like specific products. We should know that on this seat, there's a Chinese consumer, and the next seat, there's a Japanese consumer, and they have different needs. So really, what, what is the underlying plan for us in the IFP system that we actually individually personalize the service that we offer also on the screen? That not everybody gets the same content on the screen. And that's really... It's a process that takes time, but we, when we're launching the Airbus 350 in October, we are bringing the first elements on, on the personalization, and we will bring new services while we go and grow the fleet. So really, the Airbus 350, which we get in as of October, uh, will be the underlying change, both of Finnair as an airline, but also will bring uh, the retail experience and the open channel experience to a new level with the online onboard connectivity. Singapore will be our fourth route, getting the aircraft next in February. We start with the Chinese routes, and then we build up and total we have 19, 19 of these aircraft uh, on order. And this is really the foundation for Finnair, how to build the customer experience to a new level. Uh, moving from a legacy airline to a new, new future airline, which we plan to be one of the winners. But really the key is the customer experience, an individualized customer experience. It has to be relevant, it has to be personal, so that people will value the added value that an airline can bring. Otherwise, we're just a transportation company. We need to be more than a transportation company. That's really 